consider the fable of the minnow and the tentacled snake, <laughs> or how the animals got their cleverness. In the shallow river, brimming with snapping, biting, minnow-eating things, sadly, had to live the minnow. Despairing at all that was brimming, the minnow grew two nerve cells in his head, one on either side. Of course, you and I call these mouth nerve cells, but the minnow's not to know that. Each one crosses over and has a tail as long as the minnows that ties to all the muscles down that side. These two nerve cells make the minnow ever so nervous. Every time he feels a ripple or a tickle, or hears a wriggle, or catches a glimpse of spittle on his right-hand side, his right-hand cell sends a zing of electricity down all the muscles on his left, and he coils up like the letter C and darts away. And so his mouth and cells keep him safe from all the snapping, biting, minnow-eating things in the shallow river. Until one ill-fated morning he meets the tentacled snake. The tentacled snake is the laziest snake in all the shallow river. She lies bent in a crook from dawn till dinner time like a folded up umbrella, moving not a ripple, but using her tentacles to feel for anybody else's ripples. By and by, the minnow ambles along and finds himself in the crook of her neck, a peaceful place, it seems, but with one tentacle, she's felt him ambling by. Aha! She twitches her tail. He coils up and goes to dart away, but instead he darts straight into her mouth. Because although the minnow is clever, the tentacled snake is cleverer. The moral of this story is that the way animals got their intelligence was through an arms race. It took three billion years from the first single-celled life to the first fish-like creature that had an escape reflex. Two cells wired together to make a little electrical circuit. And then it took only perhaps another 200 million years for something like a tentacled snake to evolve to exploit the reliability, the predictability of that fish's reflex. The snake is also hardwired, it's hunting behavior, but that requires a vibration sensing circuit and a tail twitching circuit and a mouth opening circuit, perhaps thousands of nerve cells all wired together in just the right way. Now consider us. The human brain contains about 90 billion nerve cells. You can make a lot of electrical circuits out of that. They give us the ability to make choices that are so free and so flexible that even we can't predict which path we'll take. Clever us. In the words of the philosopher Daniel Dennett, yes, we have a soul, but it's made of lots of tiny robots. <laughs>